Anti matter is real. Half of the universe has gone missing. In this building, they are making the rarest and most expensive material in the known universe antimatter. NASA created an astonishing warp engine concept design, the engine that would make interstellar travel possible just like in Star Trek. Take us out. Be for warp, sir. Let's punch it. Our universe is a physics wonder where everything is made of matter, from stars to burgers. But there's a secret twin, antimatter. What is antimatter, and how is it different from normal matter? What happens if you touch antimatter? Join us in this video to find out how this warp engine works and unravel the antimatter mystery. A, a big mystery because half the universe is gone. But if you if you think about uh, antimatter, it's real. Back in 1929, a physicist named Paul Dirac started thinking about particles and proposed that for every particle we know, like the electron, there should be another version of it with the opposite charge. In 1932, Carl David Anderson finally spotted this positively charged electron, which they called the positron. But in more modern experiments, after spotting antimatter, scientists have discovered an extraordinary interaction between matter and antimatter. When the two meet, they annihilate each other in a burst of energy. Scientists are pretty excited about this energy release because it could potentially be a super fast way to travel through space, something like you'd see in Star Trek. There's even a team at NASA researching this possibility. Possibility, but more on that later. Speaking of science fiction, especially in shows like Star Trek, they use antimatter as fuel for their starships, which allows them to explore the galaxy at warp speed. In the real world, humans have managed to create tiny bits of antimatter by smashing particles together at super high speeds in massive machines like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is located near Geneva. So anti-electrons can circulate around anti-protons. And we do this at CERN outside Geneva, Switzerland. These experiments can produce antimatter particles. Space travel isn't the only thing antimatter is usable for. It could also vastly improve many medicinal fields. So every charged particle in the universe has its own antiparticle, even the neutral ones that don't have an electric charge. And despite matter composing everything around us, antimatter is pretty rare and has been since the Big Bang. But why is our universe overflowing with matter and not antimatter? Matter. At the beginning of the universe, at the Big Bang, there were almost equal amounts of matter and antimatter. The two annihilated in the instant of the Big Bang, and we are the leftovers. It is possible that there was just a tiny bit more matter than antimatter. Less than one in a billion particles of matter survived this game of chance, and those survivors went on to create everything we see today. Antimatter is one of the most respectful things in science but it is very rare in nature, and when you try to make it, it's like throwing money into a black hole. Back in 1999, NASA threw out a number that might make your head spin. They said it would cost $62.5 trillion to make a single gram of antimatter. But at CERN in 2008, they calculated that producing a tiny amount of antimatter would set you back a few hundred million dollars. Brian Cox said that they've been using antimatter for quite some time in particle physics experiments, but that they have never been able to build actual atoms of it, and the project cost isn't the only problem. Keeping antimatter contained is very hard. People at CERN managed to trap some antimatter back in 2011, but they only kept it for about 17 minutes. They just wanted to study it and they managed to trap only 309 atoms of the stuff. There are a couple of reasons why making antimatter is so outrageously expensive. Producing antimatter is no walk in the park. Only a handful of antiprotons are created when particles collide in giant particle accelerators. And these antiprotons are super hard to catch and keep. Michio Kaku has been interested in antimatter since high school. Later on, he even tried building an atom smasher, all in the hopes of creating a beam of antimatter, and failed. A hydrogen bomb is only about 1% efficient. An antimatter bomb would be a 100% efficient. They vanish when they touch. This all combined makes it tricky to do anything with antimatter, and why there needs to be caution and experts on site at all times. There is also a high demand for particle accelerators in other important scientific research. So you've got scientists competing for time and resources to make a tiny bit of antimatter. Just to put things in perspective, some experts say that antimatter is the costliest material ever made by humans. 
Gerald Smith once estimated that you'd need $250 million just to make 10 milligrams of positrons. That's equivalent to $25 billion per gram. Antimatter. But it's worth every penny of its very high cost because it may hold the answer to the question of why anything exists in our universe at all. Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about this and explained that antimatter does have opposite properties, but only in its quantum state. If we were to harvest this antimass, we would be conquering the universe in no time. It's one of the mysteries of the early universe. If we had if antimatter and antimass, we'd be all over it. People at NASA have been trying to find a way to utilize antimatter in space travel for quite some time. They want to make a spaceship that doesn't rely on conventional fuels, but instead runs on the sheer power of matter meeting antimatter. It sounds like science fiction straight out of Star Trek, but it's an idea that NASA has been exploring since 1999. The basic concept is to create a burst of energy in particle collision. These particles, when directed outward, can provide the thrust needed to propel a spacecraft through space. And the point of an antimatter engine lies in its efficiency. It would be over 200 times stronger and more efficient than a space shuttle, potentially even exceeding 2,000 times. However, there are significant hurdles to overcome. When you put antimatter cost into prospective space travel, it would be much more than the current $10,000 per pound of mass. However, recent developments have brought exciting possibilities. Recent experiments are looking into making the antimatter propulsion system possible. This system would utilize the unique properties of antimatter, releasing an enormous amount of energy. One of the most significant advantages of AMP is how efficiently it converts fuel into thrust. An antimatter propulsion system is estimated to have a significant impulse several orders of magnitude greater than current chemical propulsion systems. This means that spacecraft powered by AMPs could travel much faster and farther, making interplanetary and interstellar travel a reality. NASA researchers have been exploring the idea of using collisions to propel a probe to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star system. This type of energy could accelerate the vehicle to 10% of the speed of light. Such speeds could make a journey that would take decades much shorter. Antimatter propulsion relies on the energy released when matter and antimatter meet. You would need on the order of kilograms, perhaps up to a ton of antimatter to drive a starship. However, not all of this energy can be harnessed effectively. These particles can be manipulated to produce thrust, but it's a complex process. Despite all the obstacles, NASA is enthusiastic about the potential of antimatter propulsion and is committed to further research and development. The agency plans to test AMPs within the next decade, with the goal of having a fully operational system within 30 years. While these results look fantastic, the most complex form of antimatter that scientists have made for real, not in theory, is anti-helium, which is the counterpart to helium. And while we can create a bit of antimatter in the lab, the one we have access to right now is nowhere near enough to power an airship like the ones in Star Trek. Do you think we will ever make use of antimatter for space travel? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.